Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's live broadcast. Today is, what is today? The 14th of January, 2019. It's Monday, and uh, hopefully I'll be able to get a lot more work done this week than I, <laughs> than I had last week. But time will tell. So many things going on. Uh, let me give a quick shout out to uh, a viewer, one of you guys, who sent me two of these GeForce GTX 960s to use in um, future builds. Look at that, even in the original boxes and everything. Wow, they're like brand new. And um, this person wrote, Carrie, uh, these cards are logged in to EVG. I guess he means they're registered. I've had problems with them. They ran good. Oh, I've had no problems with them. They ran good. Um, This comes from um, we'll just say JB. I'm not sure what he wants to be called. So thank you to JB for sending the cards. I got them. They were packed very well. And you know, I'm used to a lot of people saying they're going to do something that ultimately don't do it. That's uh, <laughs> that's the one thing that gets on my nerves. I think because it hits close to home. Uh, for me, there's a lot of things I try to get done, and for whatever reason, they get postponed, and things drag on and on and on. It reminds me of a, of a joke that said, uh, ladies, there's no reason, uh, it says, ladies, when your husband says he's going to do something, he's going to do it. There's no reason to remind him every six months about it. <laughs> Just cracking me up. Anyway, so thank you to JB for sending these cards. What I plan on doing with them is to use them in one of the uh, used builds that'll go to one of the viewers, and we'll just pay it forward. That's all. He, you know, if you ever have parts like that that you think would be, you know, are still viable and you want to give back to the community, reach out to me. Because uh, you know I can't simply afford to send computers to everybody who asks for one, but with the contributed parts. It certainly makes that more possible. Now, I want to talk to you about replacing the computer you've got now. So there's been a number of people who have reached out and said, hey, I, I'd really like a new computer too, or a newer computer. I, when we did the giveaway, we had a lot of people coming out of the woodwork who never said anything before. Who's like, oh, I could really use a, a newer computer. Now, the problem with society today is I'm sure there's somebody in there, if not more than one person, who didn't need a new computer. They just wanted it and perhaps uh, wanted to sell it, you know, see it as a money-making opportunity. He'll mail me a computer for free and then I can sell it. I think the vast majority of people were sincere and it's very difficult since I don't know anybody, uh, you know, to evaluate, uh, you know, who would it be best served to go to. So um, I want you guys to know that you don't have to wait for a free giveaway. You can buy a newer computer without buying a brand new computer and it can save you a ton of money. Unfortunately, we live in an era where there's a lot of people showing off their stuff. You know, you've got Kardashians and whatnot and Instagram and of, of people taking pictures. One of the common uses of Instagram is showing how wonderful their life is and it can make you feel like, you know, it's depressing. And uh, of course, these people generally don't have as great of a life as they're trying to portray. But um, what I'm trying to let you know is that, well, there are people showing off all their brilliant rigs, or you see me building a computer with a $1,200 processor in it. That doesn't mean it's right for you. Like, if you had this system here, and you're running a system from 10 years ago, this is way overkill for your needs, clearly. So there's no reason to, to covet that. So what you can do is you can buy a refurbished computer. So when you buy a used computer, you never quite know about the reputation of the seller. When you go on places like eBay or Craigslist or OfferUp or Facebook Marketplace, you could find a really good deal on there. It's possible. But if you buy from a, uh, a big manufacturer or a big retailer that, re that refurbishes or sells refurbished machines, you have the customer service and peace of mind knowing you can return it and knowing if there's any problems you know, that you'll be taken care of. You don't necessarily get that peace of mind with uh, buying from a private seller unless you know that private seller. 
And if you do know the private seller and it turns out to go sideways because let may say a guy says, hey, it's my gaming computer. I'll sell it to you for half the price I paid for it. Your friends, you trust them, you get it. It breaks down. Two days later, you're like, hey, this isn't a good deal. I want my money back. He says, no, it's yours now. And now suddenly you're not friends anymore. So there's that danger. It happens a lot commonly with cars. People get, you know, buy a car from a friend and before you know it, they're not friends anymore. So there are uh, businesses, big corporations, and instead of buying computers, it gets very expensive when you have hundreds or thousands of employees. Same with cars. They will lease the computers. Usually a three-year lease is pretty common. And then off, when they're off lease, then they get returned back to the place that sold them, and they refurbish them and then sell them to a place like Tiger Direct. So I bought two of these Dells from Tiger Direct and it ships like any other computer. It's shrink-wrapped. I've never seen a computer <laughs> shrink-wrapped before. But uh, it comes with a very inexpensive keyboard and mouse and a power cable. And uh, th there's a letter here. And this letter is from a company called Joy Systems. And again, I, I purchased this from Tiger Direct. And I want you to pay very close attention to the top corner right there. Microsoft authorized. So. Remember, I have to keep emphasizing this, I'm a working computer technician, I'm in the industry. I'm not somebody sitting at home toying around with, uh, electronic, you know, with computers and electronics. And as a result, uh, I could jeopardize my entire business uh, by uh, using software in a refurbished machine, for example, that wasn't uh, transferable to a new owner based on Microsoft Terms of Service. Now, this isn't a, a law. It's a Microsoft policy, and I have to follow those policies, and I recommend everybody follows those policies. And the reason why I recommend it is there's no risk. Again, I, I'm running a business, and I don't run my business by gambling. I don't take chances by saying, oh, I can get a lot of uh, 25 video cards from some shady guy on eBay for $50 a piece, and then hope they all work right, and none of them burn a building down or something or cause any damage or that I just didn't waste my money entirely on a box full of nothing. So my attitude comes from a place of sustaining business and to make sure my customers are happy with their purchase and that I don't go out of business supporting it, right? And so that's why there's such an emphasis when we talk about licensing and how it's so different from other tech YouTubers who don't have any accountability or liability because that's not their business. Their business is making YouTube videos and hey, <laughs> if I have it my way, so will mine. But in the meantime, it does cost a little bit more, obviously. Uh, but you are getting that peace of mind that there is very little risk, if any, when you buy from uh, authorized sellers. Where we're talking about hardware and software, by the way. Uh, Tony Wellows contributed a dollar ninety nine. Hey, Tony, thank you. So Tony is actually going to get this computer. Tony's contributions. Um, my goal is, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do to this. I'm going to make a couple modifications to it. We're going to open it up. We're going to see what's inside. We're going to see what we get for our money. And then I'm going to box this up and send it to Tony. I've ordered two of these. And uh, we're going to pick somebody else to get the other one. And that's how this is going to work for these giveaways. Now, uh, I'm going to read this letter to you. It says, you should feel confident and pleased with your purchase of a refurbished computer that saves you money and will contribute to efforts to preserve the environment. Oh, I hadn't even thought of that. Joy Systems Incorporated is the largest refurbished PC manufacturer in the U.S. You know, I didn't know this was coming from a company called Joy Systems. I just bought it off Tiger Direct. Now that I know this, maybe I can reach out to them and work something out. If they send me some others to review, to look at what, you know, and then give them away to viewers, that would be a it be a nice little situation. I'll have to look into that. Anyway, Joy Systems is the largest refurbished PC manufacturer in the U.S., utilizing over 100,000 square feet facilities. Since its inception, established in 2001, Joy Systems has processed millions of refurbished desktops, laptops, and monitors with emphasis on superb quality and zero tolerance of defects. I'm liking the way this sounds so far. Joy Systems is proud to be setting the industry standard for quality refurbishing with strong attention to customer satisfaction. Joy Systems presently produces 35,000 desktops, laptops, and monitors per month with a goal of 100,000 pieces per month in 2016. 
we have accomplished the following Microsoft reseller award, or refurbisher awards. The MAR Worldwide MVP in 2012, 13, and 14, Worldwide Sales Champion in 2013 and 14, OEM Sales, America's Top Performer in 2013 and 14, Windows 7 Sales, America's Top Performer in uh, 2012, First MAR, that's a Microsoft authorized refurbisher, to surpass two million MAR licenses. As you are aware, our products have been pre-owned. That may show some signs of use. Small blemishes may be noticed. However, we would like to assure you this and all our certified pre-owned computer products have been thoroughly inspected, cleaned and tested to perform as new by Joy Systems, the world's number one Microsoft authorized refurbisher year after year. Gee, I wonder if they're a Microsoft authorized refurbisher. They've said it like five times. Laptop computers include an AC adapter, a recovery partition, a warranty statement, and an activation restore guide. Desktop computers include an AC adapter, recovery partition, warranty statement and activation restore guide, as well as new generic keyboard and mouse. Monitors are accompanied with an AC adapter and a video cable. Per the enclosed activation guide as requested, please enter your Windows product key accurately when prompted. You'll also obtain detailed warranty information from our limited warranty statement and technical support guide. Again, we appreciate your business and enjoy your purchase. So the back of this is the warranty. It is not transferable. So that means if I send this computer off, now it's not in my name anymore, it's somebody else's. But we're gonna check and just see if their definition of quality and mine match up. I hope it is. I, I hope that uh, this is everything they say because if I was gonna refurbish computers, this is exactly what would be on my mind as well. Clean them, go through them with a fine tooth comb, make sure they work absolutely 100% perfect and give them a legal license key. Since the license key, like you've heard people mention, oh, they sell extra license keys at these sites. There's no such thing as an extra license key. When a, and if an employer buys a thousand keys from Microsoft and they use 850 of them, per their agreement with Microsoft and the contract that they signed, they cannot sell the extras. So anyway, Again, if you're not in business, if you're not in the business and you don't own a business, you, none of that really is gonna impact you at all, honestly, other than the little bit of risk that you're taking. But for the rest of us that you know work for a living and uh, work in this industry, if we wanna stay in the industry, uh, best to do everything by the book, and that way uh, you have nothing to worry about. There's no, no risk involved. And um, it looks like a couple contributions have come in. Let me give a quick shout out here to Kimberly Taylor, Kimberly Taylor, who's contributed at $1.99. Thank you for that, Kimberly. And uh, another contribution came in from Robert Roby, uh, two pounds he's contributed. Thank you to Robert. Thank you guys for supporting the channel. I really appreciate that. And hello to all my friends here in blue. Thank you guys for joining in. And let's get this thing unwrapped and see what we got in here. And I don't know, Tony, you can give me your thoughts too as you, as you see your new computer here. Maybe Tony says, I don't want that thing. It should be pretty good. These cost me, I think these were two, I have to look, but I think they were $240. Now, here's what I want you to keep in mind. Start pricing things out. Like if you were gonna piece this together yourself, just let's say a new computer, which isn't a fair comparison, but you know, do you'll see where I'm going with this. The um, Operating system is Windows 10 Home 64-bit, and it shows there's a there's an X up here on the product key, and it says please use the refurbished license key. I don't know where that is. Clearly, it's not this one, and it says here this key is no longer valid. So this was the key that was leased with the computer and the key was leased. After the lease was up, the key's not valid anymore. So I'm not exactly sure where that key is, but we'll get to that in a minute. When you consider the price of the operating system, if you went on to Newegg or Amazon and you bought a legal authorized copy of Windows 10, it retails for $99.95. And let's say you got it on sale for $89.95. Then you have uh, a DVD, oh geez, I, I, 
I don't know if that's just a reader or not. But you got a couple of bucks in that. You got a couple of bucks in the case. You got a couple of bucks in the power supply, the fan, the motherboard, the CPU, the RAM. You add all that up, and it was uh, only, I think, $10 for shipping for this. Seven or $10. It was cheap. So you add all that up, it's a really good deal for that amount of money. Let's open it up and let's take a look at how they refurbished it. I like how that panel comes off, that's real good. Uh, you're well aware of uh, previous videos where I've opened up, well it was an HP that I opened up, that the hard drive cable was disconnected. Here, cables look fully connected. I don't see anything wrong with the computer at all. Cable management is where it's supposed to be. There's little loops that these wires go under, maybe except for that one, but I don't think it'll reach. So, but they did loop it under here. We've got an extra SATA cable here. Everything seems really well plugged in, but there's no clips. They used, um, and this is Dell, used the SATA cables that don't have the clips on them, so they can fall out. We're going to plug this in now. We'll turn it on, make sure that it works. We've got this power supply, which is rated at, oh, what does it say? Can't really tell. We'll come back to that in a minute. Let me get this plugged in. You'll look on the back. It's going to be a little limited on the back. Remember, these are business machines. So you still have the traditional keyboard and mouse uh, PS2 ports. Two USB here. I think these are USB 3s four USBs here, two display ports, and one VGA out. There's no HDMI or DVI. You've got a gigabit Ethernet controller, and for sound you don't have stereo, you, know, you don't have surround sound or anything like that, or a lot of inputs like you do on a motherboard you would buy from Asus or Gigabyte or MSI or ASRock. It's just two ports, just like the front of the computer. Headphones, microphone, that's it. And the microphone doubles, the microphone input doubles as a line input. So instead of giving you a, a traditional motherboard gives you a separate input for line and uh, one for microphone. Here we just have speakers out and uh, microphone or line input. That is all you get. You've got four expansion ports if you want to add a Wi-Fi adapter internally or a video capture card or even a, a graphics card, you can do that. Just don't know if we're to have the connectors uh, on the power supply for that. It doesn't appear it does not appear that there's any extra cables. So if you're gonna add a video card to this, you're gonna have to change the power supply. All right, let me get it plugged in and uh, we'll get it turned on and see what it does. So it uses a traditional power cable despite the letter that said it would include an AC adapter. They're obviously referring to, to um, computers that would require one. And I just plugged this in and it immediately turned on, which bothered me, hopefully it'll stay off now. And um, let's see, I gotta figure out, my video capture card is HDMI only, so I haven't used this. I've been looking for an excuse to use this little adapter that goes HDMI to VGA. And because HDMI can carry audio through it, you can optionally plug this in to the speaker input on the back of the computer, and then your HDMI cable will carry the um, video and audio. I don't care about the audio, so I think this ought to be fine. And we'll plug this in right here, like so. I need a keyboard and a mouse and the network cable. I've got a network cable right down here. We'll plug that in. And I need a keyboard and mouse, keyboard and mouse. We'll just put those right hip here. There we go. Okay. And, oh, there's four more USB ports up front. That's a lot of USB ports. So four, eight, ten USB ports total. I'm not sure how many of those are USB 2 and how many are USB 3, but when I was buying, uh, obviously you can still buy older machines that don't have USB 3. So I'm looking, when I'm looking for something refurbished, I'm looking for a little tower that can be worked on versus a mini computer which is much more proprietary in its design, especially with regards to power supply. And um, I'm looking for, okay, so USB 3, I'm, I'm looking for uh, the tower design. 
I'm looking for Windows 10 64-bit installed, and I'm looking for at least 8 gigs of RAM installed, and a minimum Core i5, nothing below a Core i5. And that's what I purchased. It was exactly meeting those requirements. And we'll get into those uh, more precisely, what those parts are, as we turn it on here. So let me switch over to... Let me switch over to the other input here. Okay, so of course the thing says no signal because that's the video feed coming out of this and since this is off, <laughs> there's no video feed. So somewhere on here is a power switch. Oh, it's right here. Power switch lights up and works. DVD drive better be empty. I'm gonna check it. Yep, it's empty. This is a Dell Optiplex 7010 in case you're wondering. And hopefully this little video adapter will work. I'm not sure, I've never used it before. Let's take a look and see if I get any signal here in a minute. This is a little disconcerting. This might need to have power to boost the signal. It's funny, I've got a, I've got a ton of video adapters to go to HDMI, but I don't have any DisplayPort adapters. And I didn't expect <laughs> this situation. Let me see if I've got another kind of adapter I can use. Uh, let me see, maybe I can go DVI to VGA, or VGA to DVI and DVI to HDMI and get around it that way. Uh, let me see. No, I may not be able to do that. So I'm running into my first little obstacle here, which is uh, getting into the video capture card. I'm not sure if this, like I say, if this requires power, what I might be doing wrong. I thought this would just work. Hmm. Gosh darn, I wish I had a DisplayPort adapter. Murphy's Law. Uh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to pull an old monitor out and put it up on top. That'll just be the easiest thing. And then later on, guess what I'm going to order? <laughs> I'm going to have to go through this again. Uh, let's see. this way. I'm going to hit the power switch on this and hopefully it'll just cycle down assuming it booted into Windows and we just can't see it. And I still have my kilowatt device plugged in down here so I have to remove that so I have room for the plug for the monitor and the plug for the PC to plug in. And then I just need a regular VGA cable. I know I've got those laying around here. Lots and lots of them. Just have to find them. Ah, this will work. Okay, so I've got a VGA cable that has a DVI adapter. It's like no matter what I've got, I have to adapt it to something else. Murphy's Law. All right, so let's get this plugged in. And we'll just go from, and remove that adapter. I don't know what's going on with that. We'll just get rid of that. Let's put this down here. We'll put this one up here. Okay, all right. 
And then I'm gonna just put you back on the main big screen here, because uh, clearly, whoops. Clearly, um, the other thing ain't working. I got a lot of dust, lots and lots of dust. It's bugging me, let me get that dust off of there. I haven't pulled that monitor out in a long time. Okay, let's just do that. That's a little better. And let me turn it back on. Let's see if we get a signal this time. Well, we are not off to a good start. Maybe nothing wrong with my adapter cable to HDMI. Maybe we're just not getting a video signal. Now there's, so I'm a, I'm a, my OCD and my attention to detail uh, makes, makes me very good at working with computers. And I notice little things that other people, regular people um, don't even notice. Like for example, here they've got the two sticks of RAM installed uh, and there's two white retaining clips that are holding the RAM in. And then there are two black retaining clips for the two additional sockets if you want to add more RAM. And the two retention clips are closed on top and they're open on bottom. If it was one way or the other, I'd be fine, but why did they, why did they close the top one and the bottom one? It doesn't make any difference in the real world, but to me it's that attention to detail. And stuff like that upsets me because it's like clearly well, they claim in their letter um, that they go to through all this detail. You know, their argument is probably that doesn't really matter and no one would regularly see it. It still doesn't explain why it's open. Like, it's just weird. <clears throat> but anyway, uh, we're not getting any video out of it. So there may be an issue here with, with the RAM. So what I'm going to do, first and foremost, is pull a power from the computer and I'm going to just reseat this RAM. I'm going to take one module out. Oops. And then we'll put it right back in again. And I'm going to do the same thing with the other module, just reseat them. And then I don't, I'm closing those other two clips because I don't know why they were open. All right, let me bring this up again. We've got no video at all. So as you can see, the CPU fan is turning. Power supply fan is turning. Rear case fan is turning. It's very quiet. I can feel the hard drive is on and spinning. Everything looks good. I don't know why I'm not getting any video. I'm going to pull power again. I'm going to pull the keyboard and mouse off of this just to see if that makes any difference. Let me make sure that the VGA input is selected. It should be automatically. Menu. Hello, menu. Ah, here we go. All right. Now I'm curious if I'll get a feed. I want to try one more time. Well, I've got a signal just to see if this adapter will do the job. Let's see if we get a signal now. No. Okay, so that adapter is not going to work for me. What a bummer. 
What a bummer. I think... I think this needs power. I think that's why it's not working. try this. This is just a USB cable and I think it runs off USB power into the adapter. I could be wrong. Yeah, that's what it needed. There's a, there's a small plug on it that it needs power to do this conversion. So what I think, I think we're going to be okay. Let me plug the keyboard and mouse back in. And I think I was turning it off while Windows was uh, not shut down properly. And I'm sure that's entirely my fault. So let's see what happens if we get any bloatware or anything like that. Let's see. That's the first time I've used that adapter. I knew one day I was going to need it. Turns out that day was today. <laughs> All right, let's see what this thing looks like. Computer restarted unexpectedly. That's fine. And Tony Wallows contributed $1.99 again. And again, thank you, Tony. All right, let's see. Desktop any day now. Douglas says he bought an off-lease machine and it was free from bloat. That's good. I hope this one will be as well. We're gonna about, we're about to find out. You know, because Dell, they, they throw this, they make deals with the companies like Symantec to throw software on there. and um, That's on the new PC sales generally only. It's, if there's any bloatware, then that's a separate deal made by the refurbishing company. And based on that letter I read, doesn't sound like this company would do that. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's all good. I, again, I think all of this is happening because the first boot apparently is Windows installing. Apparently what they're doing is they're putting a copy of Windows 10 on here that is ready to install, but you, the customer, you finish the install when you get the machine. That way you can agree to the end user license agreement and enter your product code. I'm pretty sure that's, that's pretty typical. can't read the screen, it's too small. What's it saying? Computer restarted unexpectedly or encountered an unexpected error. Windows installation cannot proceed. To install Windows, click OK. All right, how many times do we have to do that? I'm guessing I created this problem because of the video issue. I don't believe that this is a fault of the refurbisher. I think this is my fault. And Jimmy agrees. <laughs> wow, we might be stuck in a loop. Well, that's too bad. One more time, and then I'm just going to put a Windows 10 disk in there. I was curious to see what version of Windows 10 they have on here, but I've got two of these machines, so we just we may do this one separately, differently than the other one, because um, I got a feeling I'm stuck in a loop here.
In fact, yeah, yeah. So let me go ahead and turn this off and let me just plug my Windows 10 USB stick in there, which is on the floor. Here it is. Let's just go, hmm, let's go right here. Turn that back on. And then probably F12 or something, I imagine, will get us to the boot menu. F12. Yes. USB storage device. U yeah, here we are. UEFI SanDisk Extreme. That's what I want. And while that's doing that, I can pull this monitor down. Since I pulled, pulled that monitor up for no reason. Since we've got the adapter working. start this process right now. I know it's not going to have any bloatware on it. Some may argue this is the best thing to do on a refurbished PC. It may not be necessary though. In my case, <laughs> because I've uh, interrupted the installation process now, I've corrupted it. So I have to reinstall. I'm going to say I don't have a product key for right now. And we're going to do... See, I don't know. This has got to come probably with Home or Pro. That's the question. Um, and it tells me I've got to enter my own key, but it doesn't tell me where that key is. Let me think about this for a minute. Let me go back in the box and see if there's a, some paperwork in there with a product key that I need. I just really need the version of Windows. It just appears to be a mouse. And that just appears to be a keyboard. I don't see any information regarding the product key and where we find that at. Hmm. Questions, questions. What did this have before? I don't know. It shows a Windows 10 sticker. Use the new product key, they said. They do have information for technical support. It's not an 800 number. It's a 732 area code, wherever that is. And I'm sure I can call them and ask them. And I'd have to look at my receipt to see if I ordered these with Windows 10 Pro or Home. I have no recollection of what I ordered. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do just to keep this moving along is I'm going to select Windows 10 Pro. And if I have to reinstall it later, then I will. That way we're not all just kind of stuck here waiting. I'm going to remove these two partitions that it has now. This is a 500 gig drive that's installed. Okay, so now I got Windows installing, and while that's happening, I can put this monitor away and get it out of here. Less clutter.
Oh, that's the adapter. That's the kilowatt reader that can go over there. I gotta put this adapter back on because the next time I need it, I'm probably gonna need that adapter. All right, let me bring you back onto the main camera here. We don't need to, we don't need to stare at that. And let's see what I've missed in the chat. Area code 732 is in New Jersey. Okay, well, that explains that. Carrie, maybe they stuck the computer, the sticker under the computer. Yeah, I'll check it later. I'm not worried about it right now. Now, the, um, this is how the computer ships. Now, I'm not gonna be sending it to Tony this way. I'm gonna make a couple little modifications to it. And one of those things will be to pull the mechanical drive out of it. And I want to show you why. Uh, we're going to let Windows 10 install. We're going to get all the updates and drivers installed. And then we're going to measure how long the computer takes to boot with all that done. Uh, then I want to acronis it to a solid state drive. Just a cheap solid state drive. Don't need anything fancy. I'm going to have to use an adapter because there is no solid state drive mounting in this case that I can see. So we'll have to use a two and a half inch to three and a half inch adapter and then uh, use the drive caddy to, uh, to mount the, three, the two and a half inch drive. I think that's what we're going to have to do. And then we'll reboot the machine and or we'll, we'll boot the machine up with the solid state drive and, and compare boot time. And I think, I truly believe you guys are going to be blown away by just how fast this computer is, especially if you're using it for tasks in an office like email, Microsoft Office, which includes spreadsheets, word processing, um, QuickBooks and Quicken, things like that. I think you're gonna be very impressed with how fast this computer responds. Now, it's not a gaming machine. You could turn it into one. It does have a PCI Express slot. It's got two of them, actually. And uh, like I said, you'd have to change the power supply, but there's nothing proprietary that I can see so far in this design. Everything is workable. If necessary, you'd change the power supply. If necessary, you could change the motherboard. It seems to have a regular I.O. shield here, which is a nice change of pace. So as long as you had a micro ATX board, it should line up and fit in there just fine. And, um, you know, if you wanted to change the DVD drive out for a Blu-ray or a recorder, you could do that. I don't think that's a recorder. I think it's just a reader. But not many people record on CDs and DVDs these days. Anyway, it's... Those who do are a dying breed, I'll put it to you that way. And again, to buy these components individually, even a cheap case and a cheap motherboard with this equivalent processor and RAM, um, without the OS installed, you'd be at that price easily. So you're getting all this additional plus the OS, I think it's a great deal. So I'm gonna find out though. I could eat those words here if it doesn't work out the way I think it's going to. But we'll take a look at the system specs, you know, we'll get a detail of the processor, the speed of the processor, the motherboard, we can check for a BIOS update on the board. We'll do all that. And in theory, you know, if they refurbish this correctly, in my opinion, they're paying attention to all the details, they should have updated the BIOS if an updated BIOS was available. So I don't know, you know, when you're pushing out as many units per month as they're pushing out, it's really hard for me to believe that they can take the time that's needed to go to the detail that I go through. And it's one of the reasons why I don't have any employees is to ensure that uh, consistency of, of quality. And when you get that big, as big as this company is that refurbishes these, you're hiring people. Some people are better than others as far as being an employee goes. And whether or not those employees are following the company's procedure or not, I don't know. In other words, the little details like I'm talking about, does the company care? By the, by the way I interpret the letter, they care. But from what I'm seeing, mm, and I'm not quite sure, again, how they could have that kind of quality control with those kind of numbers 
It's just too many they're shipping out too quickly to, to have that level of detail. But if they do, wow, that would be very impressive and would love to know how they can do that. So that being said, uh, have the proper expectations when you're buying refurbished. And that's why it's important to have peace of mind. That's why it's important for me to not buy off of those, uh, you know, eBay and Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist or OfferUp, to name just a few, because the sellers are probably gone. Once they've got your cash, they're more than likely done with the transaction and whatever problems you ha might have are your problems now. Um, that doesn't work for me as I've already explained. I need to have a company stand behind the product or it costs me money and since I'm running a business, it's not like I'm taking a hit just for me. I'm also taking a hit on the customer side. So it's a double whammy for me. Now you could also get, with all these USB ports, you could also just plug in an external DVD reader re uh, recorder. There's a, like $30, you could buy one, plug it in, you're good to go. It'll run right off USB power. Uh, you know, if you didn't want to open it up and replace it, that, that's an option for you as well. But replacing it's really super simple. Uh, with this case design, you pull this lever down, disconnect the cables, slide the drive out, put the new drive in, plug the cables back in, it's done. David Gilman's contributed $5. Hey, David, thanks for your support. Thanks for your contribution. GeoSam says, Joy Systems have been around a long time and their support's pretty good. Well, it's good that somebody's heard of them. I never heard of them. We'll see if they bring me any joy. Will the graphics, the 650 card fit in there? Um, I imagine it'll fit in there. It's just a matter of getting it power, which will be replacing the power supply. I can't see any reason why it wouldn't fit. There's pretty long distance all the way across. I don't think that card's longer than that. But um, you can always buy the shorter cards for sure. You know, you can get those uh, 1050, the little GTX uh, NVIDIA 1050 cards and 1060 cards for around $200. Under $200, I meant to say. So um, something to consider if you want to go that route rather than a full length card. Although again, you still have to replace the power supply. Let's see, Planet Cryos contributed $2 and here's a little support from good old upstate New York for you. Thank you for that. And let's see how we're doing on our install. Ah, okay. So what happened is the install rebooted and for some reason rebooted back to the flash drive. So I'm gonna hold the power button in until the computer shuts off. And then I'll wait for the fans to stop here. And then I'm gonna pull the flash drive out and then turn the machine back on. Now it has nothing else to boot to but the hard drive and it should then complete the Windows 10 install. Turn it on. For some reason it's trying to boot to the um, LAN, which it shouldn't do unless it cannot boot to the hard drive, which is a little disconcerting. We might have a bad hard drive here. I mean, my intent is to pull the drive out anyway. But um, that's my only concern about wear and tear on these refurbished computers is the mechanical drive. But even if the mechanical drive was brand new, I'd still want to pull it because of uh, performance of an SSD is so much better. And on an older machine, it can make the difference between tolerable and intolerable. SATA, this is what I want. UEFI, it just says legacy boot. Boot mode is set to legacy. Boot mode should be set to UEFI. Let's go to BIOS setup. Let's see what we got in here. Ooh, this is a different BIOS. So the BIOS version is A28. There's our asset. Oh, they've removed the asset tag. That's interesting. But there is a service tag. And using the service tag at support.dell.com will uh, 
give us all the drivers we will need if there's anything there and BIOS updates. Uh, this is DDR3 memory and this computer is five years old. It was manufactured almost exactly five years ago, just a couple weeks away from being five years old. Now, that's not the day it was put in service. That was the day it was manufactured. It does show an ownership date of 11 days later, but that seems highly unlikely that it went from the factory to the customer and that quickly, but it's possible. As for the boot sequence, I don't want to boot ever from the onboard NIC. And I don't want to boot from the CD drive either. And we want to boot in UEFI. I don't know why that was set to legacy. So I do have a bit of a concern that they claim that they were into the details of refurbishing when they didn't even optimize the system. Uh, and we got a warning about legacy mode or UEFI mode here that says, when in UEFI mode, the enable legacy option ROMs option will allow legacy option ROMs to load. Without this option, only UEFI option ROMs will load. Duh, okay, well, um, whatever. Day and time are pretty close. What else do we have in here? So I'm going to leave the NIC enabled, but without PXE, because we're not going to boot to it. And it does have a serial port, though I, again, it's not used, so I'm just going to disable that. I don't know why. I guess in a business you might use it for a receipt printer, something like that. SATA was not, was, was not set to AHCI. That's, again, these, are, these computers are not being configured correctly from the refurbisher. They're not optimized. And I don't know why that's not enabled. Let's turn that on. Enable USB support, enable USB 3, yes. It's cool, you can enable and disable them. This is important in a business environment if you don't want employees to potentially copy documents or uh, proprietary company information, you know, that for espionage or to sell to a competitor. So you, it's a way of uh, restricting not only what your employees potentially can take home, but also what they can bring from home and infect onto your systems. Um, when you deal with employees, you just never know. As for security, I don't need any of this. Uh, secure boot should be Secure mode, the system needs to be in UEFI mode. Uh, we can turn secure boot on if we want to. Key management. Uh, again, this is all for uh, corporations. You wouldn't need to go in there as an end user if you were to buy one of these. Supports turned on for all the cores. C state control is good. You want C state enabled for the computer to throttle for the processor to throttle and not be just sucking power constantly at full speed all the time. And that C state it, uh, is gonna save you a lot of money on power, especially if you have, you know, a thousand of these computers all running on, off the, the power. AC recovery, you wanna keep it off if it loses power. Auto time. Oh, that's if you want it to turn on automatically. Fan control override, no. Wake on LAN is disabled. Power on self-test behavior. I want the NumLock LED on, yes. Keyboard errors, uh, that's fine. Virtualization support. Uh, let's see what we have for virtualization support. That's enabled, okay. Perfect, all oh, that's good. And then service tag and asset tag numbers. Image server. Oh, I've never seen that before. That's cool. Nothing you'll be able to use as a home user, but I, I, I'm delighted to see that that's been added for maintenance of techs that have to, the IT department that has to support, like I say, thousands of these machines. We've got a little history here before they sent me the machine that they changed the amount of memory and they booted it a couple times without a keyboard. I'm gonna go ahead and clear this log now. And 
we should have a save and exit or something. Let's see if we exit. And I'm going to have to boot again and reinstall Windows 10 one more time while we're in AHCI mode because the installation we did clearly uh, isn't going to be optimized. And rather than tweak it and try and make it work, you know, with a registry tweak or whatever, I'm just going to start it all over again, make sure it's done right. So I'm going to have uh, F12 one more time. Let's see here. Let's go to F12. UEFI boot. Right there is what I want. Let's do this one more time. Adam says, maybe put a 1050 Ti in there. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I'm not doing it. I'm not giving away gaming machines. Gaming is an expensive luxury. If you're interested in gaming, you can finance that yourself. What we're trying to do is help the community out, those who are watching the videos, who perhaps are running a machine that could potentially be a security, uh, potential security risk, having their identity stolen or you know, lack of updates. Also, just the convenience or inconvenience of an old computer versus a new one with regards to how much time things take to do. All right, we're going to go back through this whole process one more time. Install now. And I don't have a product key. Yeah, I want to say, did it come with home or did it... See, that's the only problem I would... If I was this manufacturer, I would include a sheet of paper in the box that had all the specs. It would list the amount of RAM, the CPU, the hard drive, the optical drive, the operating system, the key for the operating, all that should be on a piece of paper rather than this. This is very generic. You could throw this into literally any laptop, desktop, or monitor that you sold to just throw these in there. They're not exactly the attention to detail, what I call attention to detail, but uh, let's see, we're gonna do Let's just keep it on Windows 10 Pro for now, since I don't know what's going on here. Um, again, I gotta go look at the receipt. We'll do next. Accept the end user license agreement. Custom install. And you'll see when I do the install, there's four partitions that are made. When they ship it, they ship it with just two. And this is just the default of how Windows 10 like if you download Windows 10 from Microsoft and make a flash drive, a installation media, as I've demonstrated uh, in a previous video how to do that, this is a typical install. So they're doing it a little differently there at the factory where they're refurbishing them. And let's see if this works any differently. Ryan Stevens has contributed $7.01. He says, I got nothing to say. I just want to support the channel. You rock, Ryan. Thank you so much. Now, uh, as for the wattage on the power supply, let me take a look with my uh, reading glasses because it's very small print here and see if it mentions anything on the side with power output. Uh, DC output is not much. It's total power is 275 watts maximum. That's all you got. And that's more than enough for what they ship with. Remember, when you buy a pre-manufactured computer, in most cases, they only give you the bare minimums. So you will not be adding a graphics card to this without changing that power supply. This is also not uh, an 80 plus rated power supply. So you would do yourself a favor by going to 80 plus and giving yourself the options of adding additional hardware if you want to. If you're a very basic user and you're simply, as I mentioned, most computer users are not gamers. Most computer users, especially home users, are using their computers for either simple games like solitaire or things like that, communication, 
through email, paying bills online and reading the news online. They might do Skype, maybe. Um, but again, most of that's been shifted to the cell phones and the tablets with things like WhatsApp and, and, and other uh, apps, even Skype uh, or, or uh, Facebook's messenger uh, ability to do, uh, you know, in Messenger you can do a, a, a call with video and audio if you want to, which is a lot more um, seamless than configuring Skype and other applications. So that being said, uh, for the average consumer, the ordinary consumer, non-gaming consumer, uh, they don't, th these are the folks that generally have the older machines. They don't have a desire to have something faster to justify the expense. They, well, they might say, I wish it was faster. They also don't want to justify spending $600 on a new machine because their current machine does everything they need it to do. They just wish it would do it faster. And in my experience, with the customers that I get, I can tell you, that's the vast majority of customers. They're running older machines, and as long as they run, they keep them until they don't run anymore. And so there's a lot of people out there who are running obsolete hardware simply because they can't justify spending the money to upgrade it. Well, I'm telling you, you can spend less than half of the money to upgrade it, and, you know, what's your time worth? So <clears throat> we'll wait for this to install, and we'll see what happens. Let me look back in the chat room and see what we're missing here. Zeller1 says, this looks exactly like what I did a few weeks ago, I bought a Dell Optiplex 990 with an i7-2600. It was $189. I put an SSD and a GTX 1050 Ti and sold it for $550. Yeah, absolutely. Ben DeCures contributed $4.99. He says, hey, Carrie and chat. Hope everyone is doing well. Hey, thank you, Ben. Oh, I hear my cow. <laughs> Jimmy sometimes. I don't know what that dog is thinking. All right, let's see if it boots properly this time. All right, this is looking better already. Looks like we've got 882 people are watching live. Hey, welcome in everybody. Hope you're enjoying the channel. I've got another one of these brand new in a box. And after we're done with this one, I'll pull out the other one and we'll try and get that set up right out of the box to see how it's configured and we'll check the BIOS to see if it's also not optimized. I imagine they're all going to be set uh, in an unoptimized fashion, which is unfortunate. But what that means is the people that this is really, that this is intended for, that this would benefit, these are the least technical people. They're going to assume that this is ready to roll right out of the box and it is not optimized. It will work but it won't work as fast based on the configuration of the BIOS, which is a real shame just by 
you know, they have that in their power when they were refurbishing them to um, make those small tweaks at that time to take that burden off of the customer, and they did not do that. So Joy Systems is not bringing me any joy right now, but I, before I condemn them for that behavior, I want to make sure the other system is consistent uh, and, and is configured the same way. And as such, it'll be a warning to those of you buying them, uh, and it will be a, a something that may prevent me from recommending them because of that. I'd like the idea of buying a refurbished system that you can plug it in and start using it like any other system, not have to format and reinstall Windows. That's ridiculous. And then we'll send a copy to, of, this e of this video to Joy Systems to show them the review and give them an opportunity for any feedback and share their side of the story on that. Perhaps they have a reason for doing it that I don't comprehend. Perhaps there's some reason people want the computer to run slower. I can't imagine what that reason would be. I think it should be the other way around. I think the computer should be configured to run as fast as possible, and the people who need it to run slower, those are the people that should have to do the reinstall to turn UEFI off and turn off AHCI. That's ridiculous. That's absolutely unacceptable. There's no way the vast majority of people need it slower. <laughs> So whatever their justification, I'm just thinking in my head what they could possibly say to justify that. And whatever it is, that doesn't represent the majority. And so they really should be tuning these to be as fast as possible. And, um, and then, like I said, if, if a customer needs it to be out of, uh, you know, into legacy mode, that would be a special case scenario. That wouldn't represent the normal buyer. And then I would understand, you know, if, if, in other words, if I was doing this and I needed this in legacy mode, I would fully expect that I have to go into the BIOS and change it. I wouldn't expect it would already be set up that way. Does that make sense? It just doesn't mean, it, it, it doesn't add up why you would make the computer run slower. I don't get it. But um, like I said, we'll give them an opportunity to tell me what the reasoning was, and I just also need to verify it with the second machine to make sure that there's consistency, that this just wasn't perhaps refurbished by one employee and the other one was refurbished by another employee. That would then open a second problem, which is where's the consistency and quality? So if they're true to their consistency and quality, that means both machines are wrongly configured. If they're not true, see, there's no way they're gonna win this. <laughs> Because it, no matter what scenario they play it out as, they either drop the ball on the quality or they drop the ball on the training, one way or the other. So. And again, somebody who would buy this and plug it in and turn it on, it's gonna boot and it's gonna run. And if they don't have a, a properly tuned computer to compare it against, they won't know. They'll never know that it could be running faster if they had, you know, if it was properly configured. I run into that all the time, by the way. I have computers come in for repair that are not built properly, or the BIOSes aren't set properly. And it's happened a number of times where I give the computer back and the client's like, what did you do? I just wanted a virus removed and this thing is like 10 times faster now. Well, yeah, you, when I took the virus off, I also configured it to take advantage of all the parts you installed. You didn't do that. And uh, they go, well, you know, it ran. I'm like, yeah, it ran. It just didn't run right. It didn't run optimally. And it's always, it's always a delight, you know, to have that conversation. You know, the customer is just dumbfounded that the whole time they were using their computer, they never took it out of first gear, you know? <laughs> That's effectively what it's like. Landon Cooley says, I bought a refurb from a local store and Legacy Boot was turned on with mine as well. I went through the BIOS and changed it back and reinstalled again. Yeah, most end users wouldn't know to do that. That's my point. And so it should be done for them. Greg suggests they probably reset the BIOS to system defaults. Well, then that's not really tuning the system, is it? That's sort of blindly following a process without any reasoning or logic behind why you're doing it. 
So in other words, if you're training an employee that when these machines come in, it's important that you reset the BIOS. The employees don't necessarily know what a BIOS is. They don't necessarily know what the individual settings should be. They just know enough to get into the BIOS, select the load defaults, and save and exit. And that's all they know, and they don't know why. That's very, very common in a factory or a warehouse where you're hiring people to work as robots. They often think like robots. Repetitive tasks over and over without asking why. And um, again, I, I've never heard of Joy Systems. I don't know how they run their business, but it would be very commonplace for the behavior of the employees to be such that um, they're not computer techs. They're people just looking for a job. They're told what to do, and they do that. So I imagine that's what's happening here. Uh, hiring techs would probably cost too much money. On the other hand, uh, they could hire a tech, and I'm sure they do, to detail the process of, de of training the employees an another level higher to explain the individual settings or to check simple things like make sure the legacy mode is turned off and make sure SATA is set to AHCI. That being said, their argument may be all the BIOSes are different and to train the employees all the different places it could be would be too expensive and time consuming. Then take off your attention to detail stuff on your letter because then you're, you're lying is what you're doing if that's the reasoning behind it. So again, a lot of speculation at this point. I'm sort of filling the time babbling on about it because I'm waiting for the <laughs> install to finish. But uh, I just I, all I have is my imagination until I hear back from the company as to, you know, imagination and previous experience with how other corporations do their functions. And uh, I'm suspecting it's probably the case. But again, we'll share the video with Joy Systems and give them an opportunity to respond regards to that. David M. says, look on the bright side, we won't have any bloatware on it. Yeah, but it may not have had any on there to begin with. All right, United States. U.S. Skip. There is a hard drive LED here on the front and that's blinking on and off. I like to see all the LEDs hooked up properly and working. Set this up for personal use. Sign it with Microsoft. No, we're gonna do an offline account. Are you sure? All right, we'll just put, uh, this is gonna go to Tony, so we'll just put Tony's name in there. How about that? If I spell it right. Tony. And we're gonna skip the password. And we're gonna decline Cortana. Say no to that. Turn all this off. Okay, almost ready.
John Tim says, howdy from Texas. And Tony Wallows contributed $4.99. Again, uh, thank you to Tony. And hopefully this will be wrapped up here in just a moment. Yay, okay. So the first thing I wanna do is just hit Windows Update. So we're gonna close this down. And we'll just hit, go right here to Windows Updates. See, that's the other thing I wanna know is, like I said, what version of Windows 10 they're including. If it's uh, 1803, 1809. So we'll find that out on the other machine, but we're gonna just keep this moving forward It's quiet, that's a good thing. It's a very quiet machine. They generally are when they're used in a corporate environment. If you can imagine, if you had uh, machines that were loud and you had hundreds or thousands of them on the floor of a building, how noisy, uh, how that would just drive people insane. So one of the good things about buying an off-lease computer is it was used in a corporate environment. And I have said this before and I will say it over and over and over. What's good for a corporation is good for the individual. But what an individual decides to do is good for them is usually no good for anybody else but themselves. So in other words, if an individual wants to back up using a certain method, that's good just for them and nobody else. If an individual wants to configure the machine with liquid cooling or overclocking, that's all in, it, a very individual decision to meet the individual's needs as well as the individual being willing to take on those risks and consequences, as well as the whole entire process of tuning it. That being said, the opposite, what's good for a corporation, always fits all individuals, no matter what. How a corporation backs up, how a corporation does their maintenance, how a corporation buys, buys the machine, what they're looking for in a machine and why, fits everybody as far as the ability to get work done. And if that work done just simply means checking email, keeping up with family and friends, paying your bills, booking flights online, all the things that normal, ordinary consumers use their computers for outside of gaming. If you followed all the corporate processes, you would be golden. You wouldn't have anything to worry about backups. You wouldn't have to worry about any of this other stuff. But the opposite is not true. And that's why I try and bring to the YouTube channel here the, uh, the processes and procedures of corporate America and the reason, again, is that there's, they have a lot to lose, much more than an individual does. And so if it's good for them, it's good for the individual. And it was a difficult process for me to learn, for me to take that on, because I was very much had that ignorant mindset of the individual who thinks the entire world has the same needs and expectations, when the reality is it's the exact opposite. Almost nobody... <laughs> Almost nobody has the same needs and expectations on an individual basis. And that's what makes the offering of support, from my perspective, so frustrating to witness online, where somebody asks a question and somebody provides an answer without detailing more questions to narrow down the, the um, specificness of the answer with the assumption that you're like me without verifying that first. It's just a, a conclusion that's often come to with no mention or discussion of such. And as a result, it is almost tragically hilarious to watch the best of intentions slowly dissolve into an argument. <laughs> Some, sometimes it's not a slow dissolve. Sometimes it, it escalates rather quickly. Um, but yes, uh, I, I strongly advise if you've never worked in corporate America or just in the corporation, the world of corporations, you're missing out. You're completely missing out on a very unique experience with uh, how policies and processes keep a company operational, profitable, sustainable. And it's a good way to leave, lead an individual life because ultimately 
all individuals are little companies. You have payables and receivables just like a company. And for most of us, uh, there's a problem of spending more than we make. And we end up going in debt and having to pay back credit cards and paying outrageous interests, which keeps us from establishing a profit, if you will. So that's why if you follow these, prof these uh, processes of a corporation, they're more financially sound, more reliable, maybe a little more boring, right? But also more consistent and predictable with regards to um, co computer reliability and performance. A couple other contributions that come in here. Stephen Barber's contributed $5. Oh my God, he says, I see Adele. If you have any questions, let me know. I know a lot about these. I am geeked up because <laughs> it's Adele. All right, that's cool. Uh, let's see. Um, Alicia has contributed five pounds. Let's have a Coke on me. Thank you for that. Thank you both for your contributions. And let's take a look now. Almost there with these updates. Jeff Phillips says, I see Dell people. That's hilarious. Magni Johansson's contributed 100 at Norwegian Kroner. He says, uh, good day, good evening, whatever it is. Good to see you. This was a cool idea. Excuse me. Thank you, Magni. Thank, thank you so much. I think, I think Tony will agree with you. Eric wants to know if I'll be checking the drive with Crystal Disk Info. That's a good idea. We'll do that. Are either dogs going with you when you go to Michigan? I'm going to Michigan by myself just for a couple of weeks. And then that's going to determine, um, it's going to help me determine when and if I move back and where I'm going to move back. So this is just a, a very first sort of uh, experiment here. But the idea is to just go out there and, and get some videos done without all the distractions I have being here. And in fact, I might have a road trip coming up here very soon. Um, might be going out to Tennessee for a day or two. I don't know yet, but I'm trying to work that into my schedule. Not for work, it's to help a friend out, and um, it's a good friend of mine. And I have another friend that lives in Tennessee, and maybe we could all three go to lunch or something, and I don't know, I'm not sure yet, but I, I have a desperate need to get out of Arizona. I am going crazy, <laughs> I'm losing my sanity. So there's a strong desire for me to get out of this state, even if it's just for a couple days, just to, Spread my wings a little bit. I'm just feeling a little trapped, a little claustrophobic. Tony must be excited. I don't know. Tony, are you excited? Let's ask him. And then we've got a second one of these to give away, and we haven't selected who that's going to go to yet. So we'll, we'll cover that pretty soon here. We'll figure out uh, who's going to be deserving for that. As far as I know, I got notification that uh, Philip Perez has received his computer. I have to tell you, it is extraordinarily and profoundly frustrating to me when I don't hear back from people that I send gifts to. You know, the idea behind a gift is you really shouldn't expect anything. I jokingly uh, like Sheldon Cooper on The Big Bang Theory when he says, you didn't give me a gift, you gave me an obligation. But I do expect people, if I send you a computer and I spent $100 to mail it, on top of whatever the computer costs, to just send me something to say you received it. You don't even have to say thank you, just let me know I got it, or that you got it. And it's funny how they'll sit there and talk to you and talk to you and talk to you, and then you send them something and you never hear from them again. Wait a minute, there might be something to that. Hmm. Wondering how I can use that to my advantage. 
But yes, uh, two computers were shipped. I don't know if the second one has arrived. It may not even arrive till today or tomorrow. So I might be a little premature in expecting a response from the other person. But without me going and looking up the tracking number, I don't know for sure. But I do know Philip Perez received his computer. Well, at least the, it, it arrived at the hospital where he's at. And, um, and he's got the tracking info, so he could have followed it and, and known it arrived like Wednesday, I think it was, if I'm not mistaken. So I hope I hear from him. I hope he'll write me and say, hey, I got it and thank you. But that's the downside for me is when I go out of my way like that to help somebody and I don't get, and I just don't hear from them anymore. And like I said, maybe I can do that for my enemies. Maybe I send them a gift and they just won't talk to me anymore. That could work out really well. <laughs> but I don't know his situation. You know, perhaps he's, you know, there, there could be something going on there that makes it, you know, not easy for him to be able to uh, get that computer up and running. Perhaps it's still sitting in a box. Still, it'd be nice to know it arrived. You know, that he, I know it arrived from the tracking info. It'd be nice that he says he got it. That's all I'm saying. And I, I told you this was going to happen before I sent them. I told you this is what, this is traditionally what happens when we did this on the radio program. We gave away thousands of dollars worth of prizes. Very rarely did we ever hear from anybody with an update. We even did an experiment where we sent products to people in exchange for review and not a single person who agreed to those terms and conditions followed through with a review, not a single time. So we stopped doing it. It was one thing when one person does it, but when two, three, four, five, six, and you're like, okay, this is the way people are, so we're not doing this anymore. But the idea was, rather than having a professional review the product, let's send the product to an actual person that would buy it and let them tell us what they honestly think about it, and they can have the product. We knew when we did it, there was no way to enforce that agreement. And as a result, unfortunately, people took advantage, and not a single person reviewed what they agreed to. So <clears throat> there's sort of a part where you go, okay, you know, I'm sending this stuff out, and it is what it is, and come to peace with it. And I think a true gift is really just that. With a, with a true gift, you should never expect anything in return. So I have to keep reminding myself that, because that's really what a gift is supposed to be. It's not, it shouldn't be a conditional thing. It's just, I guess it's just the way I was raised, that, that that's just what you do. When somebody gives you something, you, you acknowledge it and say thank you if you're going to accept it. And, um, and I have to retrain my brain that that's just apparently not the way most people were raised. Um, but we'll see. Like I said, one of the computers may not have arrived yet. Uh, the other one, perhaps he hasn't even unboxed it yet. I don't know what's going on. Uh, but they sure seemed awfully anxious in both cases to get them. So, all right, get that out of my system. <laughs> Fifty five Sting dudes has put the case badge on my Dell and it's twice as fast now. That's right. <laughs> okay, let's go back and check for any more updates here. Should be caught up. Uh, give me just one moment. Let me check something here real quick. <clears throat> Bear with me here for a minute, guys.
So it looks like somebody logged into my Twitter account from Firefox on Windows from Stockholm and has changed the password on my Twitter account. So I have got to reset the password back. And I'm not exactly sure why somebody would want to do that since I don't have very many followers on Twitter. And I appreciate uh, Douglas bringing this to my attention. And I'm just going to go ahead and let uh, RoboForm create a password for me so I don't have to deal with this again. Um, not sure what password was used on Twitter, but apparently it wasn't a good one if somebody selected it. So we'll go ahead and make sure RoboForm generates a good strong password for me. And we'll just use that instead. Yeah, it did show somebody logged in as me four minutes ago. It was, uh, yeah, five minutes ago. They just did it just now. So that's interesting. But let's try it and see if they can do it again. <laughs> uh, people, nothing better to do. It's all right. Trying to hack a hacker is just not a good idea, guys. You're not going to win. But that's all right. Bless them for trying. And then let's see if there's any previous uh, tweets that came out from me. Let's see. Yeah, I think it's okay. Um, I don't anticipate this will be a problem again, but I appreciate uh, Douglas bringing that to my attention. And if you uh, see anything like that again, please let me know. That was fun. That lasted all of about six minutes. I think they had control of my Twitter account for six minutes. That's how you deal with security, folks. <clears throat> all right. I didn't have, I'm sure that wasn't a good password on there. I probably picked something simple because I wasn't using Twitter. Then I started using it, I should have secured the password. All right, um, uh, let's run Crystal Disk Mark on here. Let's take a look at the status of everything. We'll just do a little tune up first. Let's get rid of the uh, people icon there. And let's turn off drive indexing. Oh, Tim says I missed a donation. Let me go back and look at that. Uh, contributions come in from uh, Tim Burchard. has contributed $5 and sent me a number for a scammer. Don't have time for that today. There's no shortage of, you guys don't need to send me scammer phone numbers. I can literally find hundreds of them in any given day and they're constantly changing. They're not going away. And if anything, it's easier to find a scammer number today than ever before. So you can keep your scammer numbers. I'm not really interested. They're easy to find. Uh, and thank you for supporting the channel. Diego Lou Samstown's contributed $5 and says, have a Coke on me too. All right, well, thanks you guys. Time to enable two-factor on Twitter. No, I don't think so. I think uh, the password that I created with RoboForm is secure. It shouldn't be a problem. If it happens again, then I'll enable two-factor authentication. But you know what? Um, bring it on. <laughs> Makes my day interesting when somebody's playing. I, I can play too, it's fine. They're just script kitties. They're not, there's no level of intelligence here. This is like the most modicum of, I wouldn't even call it hacking. This is just morons. They think they're smart. They think they're clever, but they're just idiots. <laughs> so I get amused by it. Frederick's contributed, uh, Frederick Lundholm has contributed 100 Swedish Krona. 
He says, hey, Carrie, what are your thoughts about Intel behaviors against AMD and other companies in the company's history? Uh, business is business, Frederick. Uh, Intel's not done anything differently than anybody else has done in the corporate America with regards to protecting their intellectual property rights. AMD and Intel have sued each other more times than I can count. It's a long running, um, it's actually settled down quite a bit, but there are processes in place. Apple is the worst offender of it about uh, protecting intellectual property rights and what that means and how it's enforced. But every corporation does this. They protect their place in the market. And just because you're not reading about it or you haven't read about it yet, I can assure you that the actions that are required to have a company to get as big as Amazon or to get as big as Walmart or to get as big as Intel or to get as big as AMD, they will have done things that you will personally find morally and ethically questionable or flat out wrong, but that's how they got there. I don't believe, and you know, well, this may be the cynic in me talking, I simply don't believe it is possible to get in a position of power and wealth without causing conflict on behalf of people who don't think it's right. And that includes every successful politician, um, they, they will make deals that you and I would think are absolutely morally in, just wrong. And in exchange for those deals, they can do the things that they want to do. That is politics. And in business, it's not much different. So the, as long as the United States law is saying what they're doing is okay, I have no problem with it. If Intel or any other major corporation is being sued by the government in the case of, like for me, the biggest offenders are the banks, Wells Fargo, um, Capital, it was it Capital One, there were a couple of banks, it was pretty bad. And, um, you know, they're being fined by the government, they're being sued by the Department of Justice. Uh, Microsoft has been sued by the Department of Justice a number of times, as well as the European Union. You just don't get to be this big by being nice. If you play nice, you'll never amount to much with regards to success and wealth, except if you win the lottery and then you probably won't have the money very long. If you have that sort of attitude, uh, they're, they're, these things go hand in hand. And there may be a few exceptions here and there. There may be some little company. Uh, look at Goodwill. Goodwill is a company that, that will take the stuff you don't want. You could drop it off to them. Furniture, clothing, electronics, anything, they'll take it. And they hire people who perhaps uh, have a record of, of, of crime or for one reason or another are not hireable in regular corporate America. They give them jobs to clean the stuff up, sort through it, put it up on shelves and sell it. Well, the CEO of Goodwill is one of the richest CEOs in America. And it's a brilliant business model, but is that a morally and ethically right thing to do? You give, let's say you got an old TV, you don't want it. You, you, you take it to Goodwill, you give it to them, and Goodwill sells that TV, and the CEO profits incredibly. It's not like he's paying his employees generously. He's giving them a job where they may not otherwise have been able to find work. And for that, they consider it a charitable organization, but it really isn't a charitable organization. My mother was very strict. She's like, I will never take anything to Goodwill. Um, that was 15 years ago. But it's not that they don't do good. It's that the CEO is, well, you can Google it. Just Google it. You can read all about it. But it's common. It's just same old another day in America, business as usual. Tim Burchard contributed uh, $5, said, hacked again, carry. Really? That doesn't seem possible. Let me take a quick look. Take a quick look here over on Twitter. Oh, uh, yeah. So I think, um, yeah. Uh, let's do this. 
That's okay. We will redirect it the other way. I didn't know I was going to be playing today. This is fun all day long for me, by the way. Um, it, it cracks me up that uh, <laughs> somebody has nothing else to do. Uh, let's take a look here. Let's go back to... There we go. Okay, and let's go back to, let's see. Give me just a minute, guys. I just want to... Uh just change one other thing while I'm in here. It probably doesn't need to be changed, but I'm going to do it. Uh, I'm going to do it for two reasons. I'll talk to you about this in just a minute. Hang in there. Oh, something going on outside. Hold on a second. Hang on, guys. Stay. Yeah? 5381? There's uh, somebody on the internet. I'm live on YouTube right now. I've been swatted. 
You guys are a victim of a prank. All right, well, I don't, because I know what's going on, you don't. I'm broadcasting live on YouTube. Somebody has just swatted you. Where would you like me to stand? Right there, where was like, you guys live here? Yes. And is there anybody else inside right now? My dogs. Your dogs. Okay, come on over this way. We're gonna have a quick conversation, okay? We got a call. I know what happened, you got swatted, you're being pranked. I'm a I'm on the internet. My Twitter account got hacked five minutes ago. My email address just got flooded with spam. Look. I have no record. You can look me up. You can look me up. So all of this is a prank. You're being pranked. That's what you need to take seriously right now. Just like I said two minutes ago, my dogs are inside. Am I being heard? I am being heard. Am I hearing? being heard? Yes, are you hearing me right now? Because you're sir, not. Sir, so stop. I have to take this serious right now. Okay? I don't get to play around. When we get a call saying, hey, somebody's over here with a, that's shot with a shotgun, this is how the police need to respond to make sure that everyone's okay. Our job I'm not your enemy. Our job is simple. Protect lives. There's okay, nothing to protect here. There's nothing happening okay, here. And I need to make sure. What can I do to help you? Then just relax. Let us do our thing. Let us verify there's nothing in there. Okay. We can make this as very, very simple right now. That's fine. Okay. We have dogs inside. Yes. We're going to address that part. Well, when we get hey, someone shot in there. You're lied we, to. We, we You're have... being lied to. Okay. What are you? What, okay. what process until, are you? You guys have in place? And until we verify that we are being lied to, we have to treat it that somebody is dying inside. No. That is our obligation. How many times will this have to happen before you get the hint? Does How many times are you going to repeat this? Has it happened this? to you? This is the first time, but I predict this will happen numerous times. Okay. You know what swatting is. You do know what it is. Have you, how many calls have you gone out to personally on swatting calls? So far, Glendale, yes. I do, we've honestly gone very, very few. Okay. In my line of work, I mean computer security, this is another day. Radio, full traffic, radio, I don't, radio, I don't, and you know what? If we just treated it like, oh, it's just swatting, it's nothing, and walk away, if and there's someone dead inside, look, we are liable called, for that. If you would return the call to whoever called you, you'll find it's not returnable. Have been trying to. You can't, because hey. they called you from a VPN. They called hey. you from a VOIP on a you VPN. you know how this works. I know exactly how it works. Very simple. Let us do our thing. Let's verify there's no one inside. Let's verify that there's no dangers that are inside the residence. Let's verify that there is nobody that is dead or dying inside. And this whole thing goes uh, goes from... Yeah, I'm supposed to just let you guys walk through my house? You don't have a choice right now. Because right now, we we still have to act as... On a prank some... phone call, you get to invade my home. Yeah, it's called a welfare check. It's an invasion. There's not invasion. Not an... You're invading my home. No. We are not. We are. We are. We need to get this. This is baseless. Event. You have no evidence to work to to justify this action against a person who has no record. You've got my license. That's you fine. can look you me up. I've got a PBA now. card. Okay. You see, nothing, I support the police. Yeah. This. We still have to do it. I'm still. I'm still profoundly uh, uh, beside myself that I'm being talked to and treated in this matter without justification. I On a random phone call from a complete stranger that's unverifiable, you okay. take a law-abiding citizen and invade call, my privacy. And we have people call all the time saying, hey, someone's over here with a gun and they're viable. So when you... 99.9... No, no, don't... 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 Give me attitude. You are the one that's doing the attitude. <laughs> I didn't and call you. Someone, okay, for someone that is supposedly so educated in this, you should know, hey, yeah, the police need to go in there. They need to make sure that everything's fine. 
It's not okay. like we're going through cupboards and searching things. No, that's, we need to make sure there's nobody dead inside. That's, I've already explained that to you. It's unjustifiable. Uh, According to are you. Are you apologizing to me when, that, when this is all over? I'm not apologizing to you. When it's over and you go in and you see everything's exactly the way I told you. Then I'm going to say, good, What's I'm in glad it for me? that there's... What do I get? Apart from the interruption of my day. What do you want? I'm, I want an apology. I want you to acknowledge what you did was a complete waste of taxpayer time and money. And there I should be a process. There should be a process to verify okay. these calls. There is a process. Swatting is a real problem. In and making sure there's no one dead inside. And then what's gonna, what happens when you get the next call? From me. When are you guys gonna rise up and stop playing to be like robots and use judgment? Okay. So if there's someone dead inside, you want us just to take our sweet time, you want us just to wait a half hour, wait 45 minutes, wait an if hour. If they're dead, they'll still be dead, right? If, what if they're dying? You said if somebody is dead inside, okay. they'll still and be I said dead in 45 minutes. shot. That's not what you said. You said if somebody was dead inside, that, okay. that, that, we, that's our, not going to change in 45 minutes or an hour. Our obligation is still render aid. It's still There's protect no, lives. I already told you that. Our you, job is to protect you, you lives. understand you are being pranked. And I understand. Do you have a camera? Do you have a camera? You are being pranked right now. And you are defending ignorance. Anything you are. I am making sure that someone is not dead or dying inside well, of this residence. Well, maybe dead or dying in any of these residents. Oh, we got called to yours. Yes, okay. and a prank phone call. I'm, I'm done talking to you right Good, now. Good, thank you. Hang tight. This is what I'm Well, I'm minding my own business. I'm being oh, pranked by somebody. We'll talk to a and I expect oh, the police to be on my side. Okay. Is that so irresponsible or unreasonable to think? Sides. Well, you, <laughs> you're taking one right now. We look for the welfare of people or the person that's supposedly shot in here, right? That's all we got to check off. Would you do the thing? Would you put this much effort into tracing that call to get the person responsible for wasting all of these resources? Yeah. Have we wasted enough time? Have you guys justified? Hey, you know what? I no, just want to no, know, did no, you waste your no, time? No. Yes or no? No, I'm not going to sit here and have you be judging and belittling my office. You're doing it to me. Job. No, we're not. We're here because we got a call. You and got a prank that, call. We don't know that. How can we know that? By, by determining the call can't be returned. That's not suspicious to you. No, it's not because we the get phone, them all the time. You get a phone call. I'm not saying the phone get, isn't Come being picked up. So, so let, let's just, let's just. I'll tell you what, can we stand in front of my house? Because I'm broadcasting. I want everybody to hear this conversation. Absolutely. I got a thousand people watching me live right Absolutely. now. I would love to get my camera and Let film me get this my interaction. Over here too. Lieutenant Cesaris, can you come here, please? All right. All this you guys. This gentleman says that he's broadcasting live. Well, we right are broadcasting. I want to understand why we're making such a big deal out of this. I want to understand. Go ahead and let him know, sir. Yeah, let my audience know. We got a thousand people watching live. They can hear me right now on this wireless okay. microphone. All right. They explain to the call. Everybody in my audience understands what's happening. There's no way that we can call the phone number back that we should know automatically that this is a BS call. You should, you should immediately be suspect of that. When I come out, you've looked at this house, you know the history, you know my history. It doesn't add up, it doesn't make sense. Simple logic and judgment would be able to define that this is a person that's being, I have a worldwide audience. Okay. All right. So that. anybody. I've never met you. So I don't know that. You're not well, famous to me. I've never seen you. I'm on not TV saying I'm I've famous. Never, I've I'm never not, read anything I'm not about saying, you. I've never even so been we to go, this house. We before. go based off of what we have, and the information was that there was a gentleman that had just shot somebody with a shotgun, and that's why we came, and that's why we do what we do. But yet, no sure. neighbors called and complained about a shotgun sound, right? It happens all the time. It happened. You would be surprised. And yet, the phone number that called you, you cannot return that call because it's not a valid number. It happens all the time. It's not a number. Nine one one only phone calls all the time. Time, we cannot retrace those 911 only phones. There are there are multiple 911 only phones out there in the world, and we cannot but trace. Look those. at what the we city is spending. Them. How many squad cars do we? Now sure, the person. Not, it doesn't matter. Wait, what I want you to care about wait, money. Wait, I, I would spend even. We're here to make sure that but there's not a dead person in there or somebody injured. Yep. That's all. Here's we're the here concern. For. Here's the concern. You've got one, two, three, four, five, six, it, it, seven, eight. It doesn't eight, matter how many cops. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 squad cars. You've got a helicopter. Absolutely. And the person yeah, listening who pulled this prank that's is watching right now, laughing his ass off, that's on. encouraging him to do it again. Well, 
Well, that's, that's the message you're sending, that, that this not, behavior that's is acceptable. That the community knows that we will do whatever it takes to protect them. That's, what, that's the message that we're Listen, sending. Listen, I have here. no doubt you're going to do whatever it takes to protect me. Okay. I'm not so questioning the fact that. that. The fact that you're going to sit here and you're going to argue the fact that we came here to respond to make sure that everybody was safe makes you under, has, you're oblivious to the reality of the world. I'm right not now. oblivious so, to the reality ahead, of the world. I'm day, oblivious okay, to the reality of. We'll get your information and, and we'll get out of your hair because it's obvious that all we're doing is annoying you. Have a better day. Yeah. Make sure you provide the information. Well, I hope your time is better spent actually solving, doing something. This is ridiculous. Well, this this, this is, is overkill. This is not overkill. A single officer is, coming this, out no, to verify. No, 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 no. That is not the way we. That is not you, the way we operate, sir. You know what? When you get a call of somebody that's just killed somebody, you think we're going to respond with one person? Really? That makes absolutely no sense. It doesn't I mean, make you sense have that to use a little bit more common sense than that. But yet you don't use the common sense when somebody makes that claim. Anybody can make it calling from anywhere that's in the right. world and you and treat them all respond, the same. We would respond exactly the same to any other call just like this. That's the way we roll. That's well, we you should note this address because I predict you're going to be getting more calls like this. OK, well, we'll, this is we'll, a, this we'll is note a, it in the system. The, please do, because this is a side effect of me being a public figure on the Internet. This was bound to happen sooner or later. Okay. Well, like I said, I'm, I'm a victim of okay. it. And I'm glad that there's not a dead lady in there that has been blasted by a shotgun. So that's the way we're going to roll. That's the, that's the way we do stuff, sir. Well, that's I mean, you might as well, respond. why don't you just stop by randomly and check on that? Is that your justification? Who's to say there's not a dead lady that wasn't reported tomorrow or next week? Then we'll respond the same you way. You won't we'll respond, verify. right? Sure we will. No, you only respond if a, if, a, if a claim is made without any basis behind the claim. Okay. So what you're I'm, saying I'm, I'm is you can justify with. a fake claim, but you won't just randomly show up and check my house well, using the same justification. If you want us to show up and check your house, we'll show up and check your house. If that makes you feel better, we'll do it. it I'm just saying it's... it's I, I understand like, what you're saying, but we're, we're done having this conversation. Have a good day. Yeah, okay. you do good the luck. same. Yeah, you too. Hold on, hold on. I'm still broadcasting. So that is a SWAT that was being swatted. And I'm very disappointed that the uh, city is, def is defending their behavior. So I'm not sure how much of that got broadcast, but I hope you guys caught all of that conversation. And uh, we'll make sure that the steps are taken to avoid that in the future. It, uh, re it had a helicopter out and they had uh, police cars blocking the street front and back. So hopefully, um, I'll have to play this back to see how much of that was broadcasted. I wish I had taken my camera out. It was very unusual. And uh, in the meantime, uh, as a result of that, I'm a little shaken up by it. And so I'm going to go ahead and end the stream right now. And uh, we'll pick this up. Uh, we'll try again tomorrow, see if things go a little bit better. And in the meantime, uh, for everybody watching, thank you for uh, listening. And um, I appreciate it. And we will see each other again very soon. Until then. Excitement's over for today. I'll see you guys. Bye for now.